Bible says our children shall be taught by you and great shall be their peace. So Lord, we decree peace into our families in Jesus' name. Thank you for answered prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you are a living soul, shout hallelujah. I want to appreciate the grace of God upon the life of our mother. Um, she's my grandmother. Um, that's what I, what I call her. I call her grandma. Um, for this invitation and all the people um, planning this program. I really want to appreciate what God is doing in this place. Um, every time I see Mommy Jill, I, I wonder how she's able to do so many things. Mommy, you're welcome. Man. <laughs> um, you know, the fasting, the, the scope of work and everything, it actually beats my imagination. And one thing I know is that she has created a big, 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 big shoe for many people in my generation that I don't know how we're going to meet. I, I pray that we help us in Jesus' name. I've been asked to speak on the subject, Awake to Children Ministry. Awake to Children Ministry. And um, I've been rightly introduced as praise for Owen. Um, I try to put many of the things I'll be sharing on PowerPoint presentation so that the multimedia people can follow. Um, I'm always a fast talker, so I will try my best to slow down, but most of the things are there so that those of us who want to write can actually write and jot. 1 Corinthians 15, 33 to 34 says, Be not deceived. Evil communication corrupt good manners. Says, Awake to righteousness and sin not. For some have not the knowledge of God, I speak this to your shame. That's the text of this conference. Um, the Lord is calling us to arise and awake to the things happening around us, especially to children's ministry. I will start by saying that children are the most neglected and the children's ministry is the least funded in most churches in Africa. Because many of us are church leaders. Um, even in Europe, in America... The children's ministry is the least funded ministry all over the world. And that has created a lot of problems in our world right now. The truth about life, I mean, if you read this book of Psalms, 127, from verses 3 to 5, it says, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is his reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are children of one's youth. Happy is the man who has his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed. But they shall speak with the enemies at the gates. Praise the Lord. Now, there is nothing as dangerous as an undirected arrow. Because it could come back to hunt you. Are we together? The Bible says children are like arrows in the hand of a warrior. Now, if you have a particular arrow and you don't know it's an arrow, you can actually fire it against yourself. Are we together? Now, so many a time, all over the churches, all over the world, we have children ministry, but we never determine what our children will turn out to become. So, people fire children anyhow. In fact, in most cases, without any direction, without um, um, any plan, without any strategy. And that's why there are problems all over the world right now. Um, if you go to the next slide, I will show you some pictures. Unfortunately, it doesn't look too clear. Um, the next slide, please. You will see some children who were in youth churches, in children's churches 30 years ago. Um, some of them, if I show you the pictures, you may not be able to recognize them fully. Um, I'll move closer so that some of you can understand. Um, this was a five-year-old boy in a junior church in America. He was in actually his church, um, children's church. He was five. Um, this person, of course, you can't see this picture very well. This was a six-year-old. Most of all of them there were less than ten. But guess what? When they were in the junior churches, the children's churches, they didn't have money. They didn't amount to anything. So the church never, never took care of them properly. But 30 years later, who have they become? I will mention some of their names. You know them. One of them is called Beyonce. 30 years after Beyonce now sings, Forbes says that Beyonce, financially, she's worth $350 million. One of them in that picture, that the one I mentioned that was six years old, is R. Kelly. R. Kelly, right now, is worth about $150 million U.S. dollars. One of them there that was playing piano in a Catholic church, 
is now known as Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga is worth $180 million. Another one of them there is now known as Madonna. Madonna is worth $500 million US dollars. Another one of them is known, um, Whitney Houston was there as well. Of course, as at the time she died, she's worth $150 million. But these are established stars now creating trouble for the church in our world right now. Those were arrows we did not shoot properly. Now they are tormenting the soul of the church. In Nigeria, because I've been mentioned in America, 20 years ago, I'm sure you are familiar with the name Dibanj. 20 years ago, in fact 15 years ago, Dibanj was in the children's church of a particular church in Lagos, Nigeria, blowing mouth organ. 15 years after, is the number one troublemaker for the sanity of our children in our churches. Are we together? Many of you know Whiskey. Seven years ago, Whiskey was singing in church. He has a stage name called El Prince. Seven years after, Whiskey is 23 years old. Whiskey has a child, and Whiskey sings all kinds of rubbish. Many of you know Peace Square. Fifteen years ago, they were in children's church, singing and dancing in their church. Fifteen years after, they are tormenting the soul of the church. Nice started music from church. One day call started music from church. There's a new one that is raining now that all the children are dancing to. They call him KC. Limpopo. Yes. He started music from his church. Miming. What has happened to them? How did we manage to lose all these people? Our undirected arrows. Because we didn't, the Bible says, the children that we direct properly, they will stick with the enemies at the gate. But you know what is happening right now? Those children are speaking for the enemy against us at the gate. And by speaking for the enemy, they are gradually creating what is called a sexualized world. In the last 12 months, about February this year, Mommy Jew invited me to the workers, um, women in ministry. Between that time and now, I have been to nine states in Nigeria. Nine. Nine states. I have spent time counseling more, and it's shocking. As in some of the cases, we, we're cases that in our churches that will break me down, and I'll be crying, my wife will be asking me, what is wrong with you? And I'm saying, you won't believe what I'm hearing when a six-year-old tells you sex is every day. In Port Harcourt, an eight-year-old told me that in the last three months, he had raped three girls. So I was asking him, what do you mean by rape? And he was in a church. The boy said to me, he said, Sir, rape is to forcefully have sex with a girl. So I said, who are the people you raped? Sir, I raped my younger sister, I raped my cousin, and I raped a girl in my class. So, because we are not directing our arrows properly, I will tell us now, this session is not to scare us, I will tell you what you need to begin to do. Now, in a sexualized world, sex sin is in all the schools. Almost all the top schools in Lagos now call me to come and help out because sex sin is a big issue. What is sexting? Sexting happens among preteens in Nigeria, ages 8 to 12. Any school that is school fees is about 300,000 and above, sexting is a major issue. Sexting is a situation where they bring mobile phone to school and a boy takes the picture of his penis and texts to a girl, asking the girl to take her own private part and text back. It's distracting a lot of schools, academic right now, and schools are confused about what to do. Rape in a sexualized world. But the problem of rape... Right now, in the world of our children, is the fact that boys no longer rape girls. More boys now rape boys. They call it for karama. In a lot of our schools with boarding houses. Follow carefully. Pornography. There are 28 million pornographic websites as I'm standing here. Incest. A lot of families now have their children, have sex with themselves within the house and parents don't know about it. A woman came to my office last month and um, she said to me, she said, praise, I've been hearing all these things. She said, I was there last year when you were speaking and I thought you were exaggerating. She said, I have come to say that I caught my two children, ages 11 and, and 7, having sex in my house. What do I do? For your reason, gay bars and gay church. When I was in the university, I was one of the people, because I got born again after I gained, gained admission. 
I was one of the people who prayed against gay. That may it not happen. It will not happen. In Jesus, we fasted and we prayed, but we never took action. But right now, the gay population in Nigeria is alarming. Every church, and I speak under God, I lie not. Every church I have been to in the last one year, at least 90% of those churches, a teenager is running after me to say, Pastor Praise, I am gay. How can you help me? In a sexualized world, lesbianism reigns. In America, there's the church in America in the last one year, they introduced condom for five-year-olds. Oral sex in the life of our children. A 14-year-old walked up to me last year, last year, September, and he mentioned a school. It's a Christian school, very close to Antony. And he said to me, sir, if you don't want your son to lose his virginity, don't send him to my school. And I said, why? He said, because break time in my school is the time for oral sex. He said, but we don't call it oral sex. So I said, what do you call it? He said, when you see a boy in my school, say to a girl, give and it shall be given unto you. And the girl responds, good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over. He said, our parents are clapping that we know Bible. He said, but give and it shall be given unto you is the, girl, is the boy's way of telling the girl, I want oral sex from you. The girl saying good measure, press down, shaking, shaking together is a way of saying, I want more than oral sex, can you go all the way? On short arrow, if we don't, that's why the Bible says, train up a child in the way it should go. It means you can train down a child. So while all of us are watching, in our world right now, the gay community now gets married. In South Africa, Last month, Bishop Desmond Tutu launched and founded the first gay political party in South Africa. Yes. And he was on stage dancing with them. In Canada, there are nine genders in Canada. I can't preach this message in Canada the way I'm preaching it right now. There are nine genders. You don't have male and female in Canada. You also have she male, he, he female, and then you have as in nine genders. I was talking to a lady from Canada who has a PhD in theology and she pastors a church. And she said to me, Praise, I'm a lesbian and there's nothing you can do about it. He said, I have a doctorate in theology. So in our world, gay has found its way. But just two weeks ago, precisely on the 27th of January, this year, the first bestial marriage took place in California. A man married his dog. I was going to show you the pictures. Unfortunately, these things are not, it's not cooperating. And the man said, he said, my dog is 26 years old. I am 28 years old. Nobody has a right to stop me from marrying this dog that I love. In California. That was the wedding. And the pastor joined them together. The Bible says... If the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Dysfunctional children will become dysfunctional policy makers. Every time we don't pay attention to children ministry, what we are doing is we are sacrificing the future. We actually mortgage the future. I always say to people that history is always repeating itself. Years ago, about 40 years ago, the Church of England was building cathedrals. They were buying pipe organs. Every time they sent a request from children's church to say we need to buy this for children, they would say let it wait. Let it wait. Let it wait. But in those children's church, R. Kelly, Snoop Doggy Dog, with Houston, all of them were there. They found their way to Hollywood. Hollywood empowered them. They joined Illuminati and they became a trouble for the soul of the church. Forty years after, those cathedrals are empty. If the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? But I'm sure you are wondering, how did we get to this level? The Bible says, while men slept, the enemy came and so tears. Number one, we are deceived. It's an assumption to think that because your children dance on stage, they are born again. Costly assumption. To think because they bring them forward and they are reciting um, memory verse, they are born again. It's not so. So we are deceived as a people. And many of us live in ignorance. 
The ignorance is so much that the children we have right now, they can be talking to you, but they are actually selling you. You are signing your sales invoice and you don't know. The most shocking case for me in the last one year, it was a case that broke me down for like one week I did not recover. It was a mother that brought a two-year-old son to my office. The boy is two years and eight months. And the woman was saying, I need to see you urgently. I said, madam, what's the problem? She said, I need to see you. Eventually she came and she brought this boy. I looked at him. The boy looked three years old. I said, no, he's two years and eight months. And I said, what's happened? He said, the previous Saturday was raining. So she decided to cuddle the boy and sleep. And my son told her, Mommy, you are not doing it properly. She said, what am I not doing properly? The boy looked at the mom and said, Mommy, let me show you. So she said she played along. And this boy unstrapped her bra, began to suck her breast, and told the mother, Mommy, remove your pants. Let me put my pee-pee inside. Two years, eight months. I looked at the boy. The story the mother was sharing didn't make sense to me because I couldn't reconcile how it took, because I mean, I have a two-year-old daughter who is going to be three. I, I was imagining my daughter saying that to me. So I put the boy on my lap and he repeated the whole thing. And I said, where did you learn this from? And he said to me, he said, this is what Auntie Ayo does to me every day. <laughs> Who is Auntie Ayo? Auntie Ayo was the nanny, is the nanny that the mother puts the boy with every day after school. August last year, a mother was having a bath in a bedroom and her son, four year old, brought out his pennies and said, Mommy, come and suck straw. Eventually, when we quizzed the boy, the boy said to the mom that the teacher in school does that to him every day and tells him not to tell anyone. There's a church where a girl was raped last year. The girl is aged three. Up till now, we don't know the rapist. Was raped in the church toilet. January this year, January, precisely January 8th, a mother called me and she said, Mr. Praise, I'm in trouble. I said, what happened? She said, we are, as I'm talking to you, we are in our brother-in-law's place. I mean, mother-in-law's place. All of us are there. She said, but I saw blood stain in my daughter's vagina. I said, how old is your daughter? She said, eight months. So when she told me, I said, please rush out to the hospital. So she rushed the girl to the hospital. And doctors began to pull off pubic hair from the girl's vagina. Then the mother-in-law said, no, I can trust all my children. They can never do it. I said, was it an angel that raped this girl? Eight months. We can't take chances. The devil has gone mad. And the church can no longer fold our hands and wait. You know my, 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 my pain, my pain in the last one year, I have been to several churches. And when we share things like this, I mean, I was in a conference and we shared messages like this. And I said, that was the kind of message that if my mother, my mother that gave back to me will hear, she will not eat. And we finished and I saw mothers fighting for food at the back. And I said, what kind of mothers do we have? So we live in deception. We are ignorant. Our priorities are wrong. We buy HYB at the expense of equipping ourselves. People even take uniforms during conferences. And nobody cares about the children. A power bike almost killed a boy in the church last week. Because they packed the power bike in the children's church. What is a power bike doing in children's church? We are distracted. Everybody is busy. Everybody is busy. Yeah, yeah, you want to make money, you want to make money. Who are you leaving your children with? You go to work, where are your children? As you are sitting here right now, can you predict where your children are? Do you know what is happening to them? What questions are you asking from your children? So while we are sleeping, the devil is doing a quick work. And we keep, we keep quiet about it. How many times have cases come to our table? I know how many cases we had last year of girls, teenage girls, who told me, I can never go to church again. And I said, why? He said, this pastor is not a man of God. And I said, what do you mean? I said, this man has raped me and I found out that he has also raped my friends. And he's still teaching. Our children are looking at us, 
they can reconcile the Jesus we preach with our life. So we are not role models to the children. In church, the teenager tell me, he said, he said, Mr. Priest, can, can God use the devil? And I said, well, why are you asking the question? He said, my father is a deacon. He's raising his hand. But he beats my mother every day. He said, he said when he kneels down and he's raising his hand, he said, I'm wondering. He said, I'm laughing at the back and I'm looking at him. Why is this man crying in church? He said, because he's a devil. Can your children serve your God? Isaac talked about the God of my father Abraham. Jacob talked about the God of my father Isaac. Joseph talked about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Can your children serve your God? Is your life preaching a different message as a minister? It's so easy for us to tell your children, do what you... Children don't learn from what you say, they learn from what they see you do. So we are not role models. They see on the pages of newspaper, a pastor impregnates a girl and nothing is done. So they are watching us. In fact, they see us celebrate secular artists when they come to church and we give them special seats. And we are telling them, don't live like them. That's hypocrisy. They see us bring compromised people, corrupt people. And we say, oh, you need to serve God. That's hypocrisy. Children are watching, they are never fooled. A school told the children, it is bad to sag, don't sag. The people who sag are, are people who go to prison. Then, on end of the year party, they brought the video who was sagging to come and sing. Hypocrisy. We live in denial. We hear, I mean, the prayer was praying all night before this meeting is God. Touch the art of someone who will stand and do what is right. We can no longer do children's ministry the way we've always done it. It won't work. Who is to blame that six-year-olds are the ones having sex in Nigeria? And in that crisis, children are becoming fathers. A 13-year-old impregnated a girl in America, in, in the UK. His name is for Patton. I was going to show you two pictures that came out of Nigeria in the last two years. But this thing is not going to show very well, so you may not see it and appreciate the picture. This one was a picture that happened in Worry. It was an 11-year-old house girl having sex with a 4-year-old boy. And they were watching it, in, they were shooting it in video. And it went all over Nigeria and we didn't do anything. 2013, this is the next one. These are six-year-old boys, four of them, practicing same-sex. That's gay. This happened in Lagos. So as a parent, when you call Manchester, and your children mention Manchester, you think they are talking football or city? That's female breast in their world. Liverpool, that's vagina in their world. Give and it shall be given unto you. That's oral sex. The girl is courageous. She has big breasts. Don't fold your hands and say, oh, my children are grown up. Listen, we are gradually raising a generation that will be deadly if we don't do anything. We are contending with sexualized generation now. But in the next 10 years, the generation that is loading is an homosexualized generation. It's only Africa and Russia that is saying no, no to gay. It's only Africa and Russia. Now, America is totally backslidden. And I tell everyone that cares to listen, America has not learned from the history of the Greek Empire and Roman Empire. They are the next empire to crash. Because people now say, human rights, my right, my right. What is your right? If your right doesn't align with the word of God, it is not a right. You can fold your hands. There are lots of cases I would have loved to share with you. Happening in our churches. And everybody says, keep quiet, keep quiet. I see people, how do you recruit people that work in children's church in your, in your, in your church? How do you? You just say, can you speak in tongues? Can, uh, uh, how long have you been born again? Do you trace their sexual history? I was working with a church last year. And we retrained all 
They are junior church workers. And in one month, they began to discover cases of junior church teachers who were gay and had been touching the boys in that church. It's not enough for you for somebody to say, I want to serve God. How? Where is it coming from? That's why the World Health Organization years ago said children are going into extinction. Madam, it's not an hallelujah case. These are serious issues. What this means is that we no longer have proper children. And everywhere I talk about this, parents say to me, Praise, you don't know what you're saying. When was the last time you saw a child fly a kite on your street? When was the last time you saw girls play tenting? What of Sue? You all played outdoor games. Your children are playing indoor games. Cartoon is teaching them gay. It's teaching them pornography. On DSTV, there's only one station now that you can trust, CBBs. Every other station is compromised. Disney shot the first same-sex cartoon two months ago. So the unbelievers are working hard. The kingdom of darkness is working hard. What is the church doing? So we need to ask ourselves, what's the way out? The first thing is, we need knowledge. God's people don't perish for lack of prayers. God's people don't perish for lack of activity. The Bible says, my people perish for what? Lack of knowledge. What is the kind of knowledge we need? We need to understand the real problems. The challenges. The church, every church with a youth ministry needs to understand that, hey, you can no longer bring someone and just say, hey, yeah, uh, this is the memory verse. No. There's a way to structure it now. You need knowledge. You need to understand the challenges. The children you are talking to that you think are children are no longer children. They are adults in children's skin. So you need to know the challenges. The second knowledge, you need skilled personnel. The Bible says the, the harvest is plenteous, laborers of few. Skilled People are skilled at handling children. The creativity of a child can be destroyed by a teacher who doesn't know who the child is. Thomas Edison was told by his teacher that he would never amount to anything in life, that he was mentally retarded. But he was the one that gave us electric bulb. People's creativity have been killed by teachers. You need the knowledge on sexuality education. It must be a curriculum in all our schools and all our churches now. Because you can't, you don't, if you don't teach them, the music industry will teach them. I saw a guy shot a, movie, a, a, a video last, about three months ago. This was a guy that in, 1990, in 2003, in 2002, I was head of media to the late Pastor Bimbo de Koya. This was a guy who was singing in church. His name Banky W. And I saw his latest video. And he was grinding girls, almost having sex in that video. And I say, where did we get it wrong? So, you need to teach sexual education because the world is teaching our children. Then we need vision. And when we talk about vision, from children's church, you must determine the kind of adults your children will turn out to become. Every church must determine it. As you are saying you want your children to be great, the devil will also see that greatness. The, the wise men that came to see Jesus, you thought they saw his star by by prophecy, they saw it by astrology. You don't know. That's, that was how they saw it. So the kingdom of darkness is seeing the greatness of our children and they are plugging it early to mess them up. Vision. What kind of young people do we want to raise in this church? And you must structure based on that. Number two, you need structure. Structure talks about the methodology. The way you train children at different ages differ. I can't get into that today. Usually I tell people I can't. Now, the way you handle ages 18 months to 3 years is different. Five, 3 to 5 is different. 5 to 8 is different. 8 to 12 is different. 12 to 18, totally different. In fact, when you are handling teenagers in junior church, in children's church, you don't teach them. You, you, what you do is actually you instruct. But you instruct as a coach, not as a teacher. Because at that age, it's an assumption to think that you know more than them. Many of them know more than you. Are we together? 
So, for example, a church invited me. And they say, Pastor Praise, all our children are going to nightclub. Our teenagers, they don't come to church again. So, I went to inspect the junior church. And I saw how dirty, how unkept the place was. They don't have drum sets. They don't have any equipment. Nothing. So, you expect teenagers who go to dance, show me your bum bum in club, to come to church and to be singing, we are gathering together unto thee. That can work in our age. It won't work in their age. So they said, what do we need to do? I said, let's restructure this place. So we restructured. And they said, we don't have money to buy drum set. I said, they don't even need drum set. Buy turntable. Get CDs of Christians who can sing and let them be using it for praise worship. And in three months, all the junior ch- ch- um, teenagers who had left, they came, they didn't just come, they came back with new people. But eventually I retrained the entire workforce and when I was handing over, I advised the pastor. I said, among all the people I have trained, this is the person I think can handle these children. But the man looked at me and he said, no, he said, we have been praying. He said, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, there's someone else. I said, this new person cannot handle this. Uh, he said, no, he said, God told him. And that's another problem. We never listen. So he puts the person God, the, his spirit, I don't believe it was God, I told him, instructed him to put. And it was a sad situation. In two months, the place was dry again. So methodology is critical. Then every children's church needs what is called child protection policy. Child protection policy is what determines, you know, the vision of the children's church. That's what determines the toileting policy for the children. Because some children have been molested in toilets. The guy that was practicing gay with children was doing it in church toilet. And nobody knew. Do you know in civilized world, if a child wants to ease himself, you can't, out of zeal, take the child yourself. If the child shouts, you will go to jail. So, but in Nigeria, you know, we just want to do things out of zeal. Child protection policy determines how children go to toilet. They determine how you recruit junior church teachers. I tell churches, never recruit anybody to work with children who has not been with you consistently for six months. Because you don't know where they are coming from. You don't know their sex history. That's what child protection policy does. Every school needs it. Every children's church needs it. Then you need space. I tell people, before adult church should be thinking of the auditorium, they should think first of the children's auditorium. Adults can manage. Children cannot manage. Next one, you must have a budget. Every church has a budget for junior church. It is not in their own time that you now say, ah, but we don't have money. But they see you blow money on other things. They are not fooled. Number three, you need leverage. Leverage means you need professionals to help. Embrace the help of professionals to help you restructure. But beyond professionals, churches must learn to do exchange programs. You know what I see in the body of Christ? Redeem is doing something that is good. Instead of other churches to humble themselves and go and learn from Redeem, they want to compete. They now do a watered-down version. Meanwhile, there's a system that makes it work. Then they need to humble themselves and learn. They will not learn it. We need to quit competition and understand that we all serve the same God. In heaven, nobody's going to ask what denomination do you belong to. So what's wrong with us? Oh, what I see if people tell you, no, 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 he redeemed. He can, we are not redeemed. We are not redeemed. Then what are you? If you are not redeemed, then you are not believer. If you have not been redeemed. So we need to do a same program. It is not out of place for a church to send their entire workforce to redeem and say, let us go and learn there. Once you learn it right, you protect children right. The last thing there is presence. We need to be there. We need commitment. Then we need strategic placement. The unbelievers are replicating themselves already. Christians are watching. You don't see what they are doing. They get into politics, they pull their children along. They get into music industry, they pull their produces along. Christians get in there, we go alone. We need presence. No church, I repeat, can effectively preserve its future without paying attention to the media in the 21st century. No church can effectively preserve its future without paying attention to the media. And I'll prove it to you. The person that consistently appeals to your children's style of learning 
is the role model they see. That's why they want to dress like Beyonce. Because they don't see you. Beyonce is what they see. Many of us know about Twitter. How many of us know about Twitter? Okay, you know about Twitter. If I mention Justin Bieber, do you know him? Sorry? If I mention Benny Hinn, do you know him? Between Benny Hinn and Justin Bieber, who should be more popular? But let me show you accurate statistics you can verify. On Twitter, Benny Hinn has 270,000 followers. Justin Bieber has 49.3 million followers. And Justin Bieber is a boy that is less than 20. I think he's 19. The boy is a, is a menace all over the world now. Everywhere he goes, he causes trouble. And many children want to become like him. That's the power of media. That's why you cannot say you have children that you are not following on Twitter. Because children are tweeting all kinds of rubbish. They take their picture, private part, and they tweet it. Go on Twitter. I shared this at the meeting and the pastor went to follow his daughter. And he said the following day, at his daughter is 12. The daughter just tweeted, I want to fuck now. He said he almost died. Because I have a few minutes to go, I'm looking at my time. I don't really, I wish I had more time. There is more to teach about sex. And I'll try to gloss through it. The 21st century agenda, sexual education starts at 18 months. I've shared this last year. There's more to teach a child about sex from 18 months to 3 years. There's more to teach from 3 to 5. 5 to 8, 8 to 12, and 12 to 18. At 18 months to 3 years, your children, has, they have a low attention span. So they can't assimilate too much. So you need to use songs and games. That is when you teach songs like, My body is my friend, and is the house that I live. It has two different parts called private and public. I will do just everything to protect my body, because I love my body, and my body loves me. With that song, you have taught your child that the body is a friend, is the house. I mean, there are lots of churches who run it now as a curriculum in their churches. There are schools that run it as a subject now. And that's why I always appreciate the Redeemer schools. Because they were the first to embrace it. Now, so, having taught that, the next thing you teach your child, you teach them about the public parts of the body. That the public parts are things that anybody can see, anybody can feel, anybody can touch. So you teach, I have my hair, is my public part. I have my eyes. I use it to see my nose, my legs, and my mouth, hands, and hair. They all make up my public parts. But you also go ahead to teach them about the private parts of the body. When you are teaching private parts, you mention the private parts by their proper names. Penis is penis. Vagina is vagina. Penis is not kokoro. It's not jumbo jumbo. It's not kenye. It's not pipi. No. So that when your child wants to report, he can report accurately. Are we together? A mother said to me that when her ch- daughter was five, she came to her and said, Mommy, uncle is... Pu-. No, the, it was the woman that was telling me that when she was five, she ran to her mother and said, Mommy, uncle is putting nail in my bum bum. And her mother laughed about it. And she said for nine years, she stopped talking to her mom and her uncle raped her almost every time. I'm sure the reaction would have been different if she had said, Uncle, my uncle is putting his penis in my vagina. So, you teach proper names. You teach my laps and lips are my private parts, my breast and bum bum are my private parts, vagina for girls and the penis for boys. They all make up my private parts. Lips is a private part. Those, don't kiss your children on the lips. Because that's where predator starts from. Kiss them on the cheek. Now, at that age, you teach them how to undo the pri- private parts of the body. It's also a song. What do you do to your private parts? Are we police and cover private parts? It belongs to me. I must be secured. I will tell my mommy, if you try to touch, what do you do to your private parts? I will police and cover private parts. Now, you need to teach all these things. Because once your children sing the song consistently, they will remember the message. And those are songs that you can even play during children's party and let them dance to. From ages 3 to 5, your child is asking so many questions. Mommy, where do babies come from? Why are you tall? Why am I short? How come you have breasts? How come I don't have? You need to answer. If you don't answer, the music industry will answer. So tell your children, if they are asking those questions, you don't have them because you are still a boy and a girl. 
Kofi is a boy, Sally is a girl. Boys become women, I mean boys become men, girls become women. Women become mothers, men become fathers. With that, you have explained to your child that it's a progression. You don't have them because you are still young. When you grow into womanhood, naturally they will develop. But you see, you teach your children the concept of respect, which I can't get into because of time. But the most important thing you teach at this age is what we call the four golden rules of the body. Rule number one says, my body belongs to me and also belongs to God. My body belongs to me and also belongs to God. My body belongs to me and also belongs to God. Rule two. I must report to my dad and mommy whatever happens to me. I must report to my dad and mommy whatever happens to me. Rule three. I have a right to say no to whatever I feel is wrong. I have a right to say no to whatever I feel is wrong. Rule four. Anybody that says I should not talk wants to destroy my future. Anybody that says I should not talk wants to destroy my future. Now, for good, every child needs to learn that. Now, then you take them fire on the mountain. Run, 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 run. But this time around, bad movies, bad picture, bad song, bad friends, that's fire on the mountain. Many of us parents watch home video with our children. If you watch home video where they are kissing, then you lose the right to correct your child when he watches pornography. Because many of the movies and many of the musical videos are pornography. From ages 5 to 8, you are teaching, your children are grown, so you are teaching them like, like a classroom setting now. At that age, you are teaching them about world changers. Young people change the world. They will get some others, Edison and the rest of them. But the most important thing you need to teach at this age, you teach them the lies of the predator. Tell your child, a predator is anyone who gives you anything and tells you not to show your parents. Because predators usually start with secrecy. They teach your children secrets, then they molest them. So and why should someone give your child money and tell your child not to show you? So teach them that that's a predator, then teach them the lies of the predator. A predator says to a child, your mommy will die, your father will die, they won't believe you, and lots of children keep quiet. When I was four, I was molested. And my answer says, if you tell anybody, they will die. So I kept quiet. For years, I didn't talk. Do you know the battle of the gay in our world? Every gay that I've worked with were children who were molested by some men in their childhood. Because something has changed in their sexuality. So when they say, I don't feel something towards him, um, opposite sex, they mean it. Because if a male adult molests a younger boy, the boy will begin to develop feelings for same sex. That's usually what happens. That's why a careless touch on a child can mess up the future of that child. Except God intervenes. From ages 12, 8 to 12, that's where I will stop because I have 14 minutes left. At that age, you teach your children puberty and self-esteem. And you need to teach them properly. Teach them lies and myths at that age. Do you know in their world, young boys gather and they say to themselves, accumulation of sperm can cause backache. Tell them it is laziness and lack of exercise that is responsible for backache. And you see, if you don't engage them in discussion, they won't tell you. They will code it. They will tell you, if you don't have sex, you will run mad. Tell them it's a lie. They will tell the girls that sex is the only way to prove it's your love for me. Tell your girls, if anybody says that, you should also tell the girl, guy to walk naked to prove his love. Because I ask girls power questions. If two people have sex together, who gets pregnant, boy or girl? Eh? If they don't tell their parents and they go for abortion, who goes for abortion, boy or girl? If during abortion someone dies, who dies, boy or girl? If there is no death, there are complications, someone loses a womb. Who loses a womb, boy or girl? If there is no abortion, someone drops out of school because of pregnancy, who drops out, boy or girl? If after giving birth, someone will give a fry and Nepal, who does that, boy or girl? If the society will stigmatize someone and they say after one, who do they stigmatize, boy or girl? Who is the fool, boy or girl? Who should be wise, boy or girl? Good. So tell your girls. Hold your girls by the hair. And tell them to wise up and close up. The most important word in the dictionary must be a no, not a yes. And that no must be consistent. At this age as well, this is where you define sex for your children as a covenant exchange of life, love. I mean, that's a 45 minute session. You define sex for, your, for them. Because if you don't define it, the media will define it. Yeah? You define sex as the covenant exchange. I tell them, I mean, I was in about, um, Abuja over the weekend on Sunday. 
And they were asking me, they said, but sir, if you say it's a covenant, you know, what of when we wear condom? We are co- covered. So I began to read what is written in the instruction manual of the condom. It says, no condom guarantees 100% protection against STIs and pregnancy. The Federal Ministry of Health warns that total abstinence is the surest way out of HIV and AIDS. It's there, but they will not read it. So they were shocked. And I tell them, don't be afraid of sexually transmitted infection. There are spiritually transmitted infections. So, find sex. Here, you define breast to your boys. Tell them the only breast that will give them breast milk is their mother's breast. At their age, it's already too late. Because in their world, they tell them, ah, see a Bobby. They call it all kinds of names. Bobby, courage. Manchester. They say, go and suck it. You need to define it. Don't be afraid to talk about it. The kingdom of darkness doesn't patch it up when they are talking about it. So you can't afford to patch it up. Teach them about penis, about vagina. When I teach vagina to girls, I talk about the holies of holies. I tell them in the temple, there is the outer court, there is the inner court, and there is the holies of holies. Outer court is where the Gentiles stay. Inner court is where the Jews stay, but the holies of holies is only the high priest who is permitted to go in there. They understand it. You take child sexual abuse at this age as well. But you see, when a child has been sexually molested, what is stolen from that child is the self-esteem of that child. The real person is stolen. So many people, they still carry their children, they say, my child. No, your child has been stolen. What you have is a false child. And that's why abuse, globally, they say abuse cannot be cured. It can only be healed. And that healing comes from the Holy Spirit. Many of us are having even marital problems because we were abused and we were never healed. Lost identity, promiscuity. I have worked with 300 commercial sex workers. All of them were sexually molested. In fact, one prostitute told me, the girl was 16. She said, sir, every, she told me the church she was attending. She said, whenever I go to church, I will put in the offering envelope. When I'm giving the offering, I am a prostitute, I need help. I will put my phone number. She said she did that for three months consistently. Nobody called her. So she told me, she said, church, it's only your money they want. In closing, we say it is better to build a child than to be trying to repair an adult. Jesus says, I will build my church and the girl shall not prevail. What controls our system, and that's what the church needs to do, is, what controls our children is what is called systems. There are seven systems that control the planet that we live in right now. There's a system that controls how you sit down, what you wear, how you talk, and how you think. Those seven systems, you have one, arts and entertainment. Arts and entertainment control culture. You have business. They control how you spend money. You have the educational system. They control how you think. You have the family system. They control your upbringing. You have government. They control policy. You have media. They control what you see and what you hear. Then you have the religious organizations. They control your spirituality. Now, the church in the end time must awake to those seven systems and go and play there. We can no longer fold our hands and say politics is dirty. We won't play there. The people, dirty people, they will legislate policies that you won't like. Are we together? You can no longer say, hey, music industry is bad. We will not play there. If you don't play there, the unbelievers will shoot movies and your children will watch them. You want to celebrate birthday, you will need to go and borrow their music to dance. Don't you see dance steps in church? Don't you see Skelewu, Eltigi, Azonto in church? So it means even how we are praising God, they determine it. There's a movement called Illuminati. We were in a meeting on, t- on Monday. I, was, I went to receive an award. And they said on Google, the most searched word in Niger- among Nigerian youth on Google are three words. I mean, are three statements. Number one. The most searched statement on Google among Nigerian children is number one, how to make love. Number two, how to kiss. Number three, how to join Illuminati. Yes. Illuminati's vision statement says, we want to control the whole world. So children are looking for power. What systems produce you? And what system are we living for our children? Whatever we permit on earth shall be permitted in heaven. The question is, will you be awake to children's ministry or you will continue sleeping? You can't afford to sleep. We need to be awake. 
every church needs to sit down and strategize. We need to build systems. What I do for some churches now, I help them build systems. So that in 20 years we can measure it. Every year you must measure it because the kingdom of darkness is releasing new things every now and then. God is counting on us. That's why I believe that God allowed mommy, uh, my grandma, to put this meeting together for us. So that we can go back and stand. And when you sit in a meeting and they say, children's church, what is the budget? You are the one championing their cause to say this is the future. Every bad leader that we... You know in Nigeria, we pray, this leader is bad. God, remove him. Who raised him? What children's church did he go to? Who was his pastor? Those are the questions we should be asking. So now, what we, are, we are pushing for a policy in Nigeria now that says if a child is molested, they will not just jail the molester, they will also jail the custodian of the child. Many parents will be alive then. Because why would you leave your child with your house girl? A boy, and that's where I will close and we will pray. I have six minutes. A boy told the mom, the boy is seven years old. This happened a few months ago. Every time the mom is going out, the mom will lock her room and keep the key and leave the boy with the house help. So one day the boy asked the mom, Mommy, why are you always locking your door? Ah, she said, my money is there. He said, eh? He said, because I don't want the house help to steal my money. And the boy now looked at the mom and said, Mom, does that mean your money is more valuable than me? Because you can leave me with the house help, but you can't leave your money with the house help. That is our attitude. It is time to arise and do what is right. Every church, you know the Bible says, be careful how you hear. You cannot claim not to have heard now. Because I'm afraid if eight, eight months old baby had been raped in Nigeria, then I'm wondering what is the church doing? You know, there are cases I see, and when I walk into church on Sunday, we are dancing, I sit down. And people are wondering, why is he sitting down? Because I am overwhelmed. To say, what else do we need to do? The church is the last hope of the world. And if we fail God, then the devil will take over. Have you ever thought about it? That a day will come, the wrong person will come into leadership, and he will raise a law that says nobody should go to church again. Have you thought about it? Your bad people say, If we don't properly disciple, that's why when Jesus was going, the command he gave us was to disciple nations. We need to disciple our children. We need to be awake and do what is right. I pray the Lord will help us and keep us in Jesus' name. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for the integrity of your word.